in this video we are going to learn about as speed indicator in detail so in order to understand uh, as speed indicator working we need to go through little bit of some practical concept uh, relates to pressure so i actually took example of balloon in order to make you understand okay so let's imagine i blown a balloon at sea level uh, let's say at this size with the diameter of 4 cm if I take the same balloon with an aircraft uh, with the help of aircraft to 10,000 feet what will happen is my balloon will size will increase why because of the pressure decreases with height at sea level I blown the balloon at 4 centimeter right so at sea level there are external pressure is always acting right but what happens when you increase when you uh, uh, go at a higher altitudes or higher right when you basically when you uh, increase height what happens is with height we just uh, saw in our basic of the instrumentation when we uh, discussed when we were discussing about the pressure pressure decreases with height so the pressure actually goes less let's say earlier the pressure was this powerful now it becomes less So what happens here the pressure which I given inside the balloon have a lot of opposition force by the environment this is environment environment uh, pressure okay so but when I go at 10,000 feet what happens the outside pressure is less basically the opposing force is less so the pressure with which I gave inside the balloon will automatically become more and the balloon will get bigger okay so the same principle we are going to have in our air speed indicator altimeter and vertical speed indicator okay so this is due to static pressure expansion and contraction due to static pressure okay now let's see the expansion and contraction due to dynamic pressure so let's keep a balloon in the uh, same uh, height or uh, on the ground because to measure dynamic pressure we don't need to go at a higher altitude we just need to measure about measure the sorry we just need to increase or decrease the speed in order to measure the dynamic pressure <laughs> now I kept a balloon with the mouth open and here I am traveling at 50 knots. Knots means nautical mile per hour. Like how we call distance we call in kilometer and speed is kilometer per hour. I traveled at a 50 kilometer per hour uh, in the speed. So uh, likewise in aviation we use knots. Knots means nautical mile per hour. Okay. So let's take an example. I traveled at 50 knots the pressure what I get inside the balloon is total pressure okay in uh, while I was explaining the pressure I forgot to mention you while moving the pressure acting on your hand is when, when you're traveling in a car when you put your hand outside the window your hand experiences not only dynamic pressure it experiences both the static and dynamic pressure static pressure is always present this point you must remember static pressure always present in the body whether you are moving or not moving whether you are moving or stationary static pressure is always present but when you're moving dynamic pressure will be more static pressure will be less so that's the theory So now this is to understand the static pressure expansion and contraction which means if I go uh, if I go to a higher altitude or if I climb to 5000 feet or 10,000 feet expands and if I descend contracts okay so if if I climb expands expands means gets bigger descent contracts expansion and contraction due to static pressure or difference in static pressure understand now total pressure so here 
we got total pressure total pressure or pit out pressure static plus dynamic is known as total and pit out pressure and when you when you started moving the pressure experienced on your hand or in your body is sum of both static and dynamic pressure which is known as pit out, pit out or uh, total pressure so here the balloon will be expand in this let's say a diameter of 4 cm now the same balloon i open the mouth mouth of the balloon and we started traveling at 70 knots so at 70 knots what happens the balloon will get little bit bigger in size let's say 6 this 4 cm let's say 6 cm so now here the total pressure is more remember static pressure is always present whether you are moving or not moving okay so this is static plus dynamic so total pressure or also known as p tot pressure p i t o t p tot pressure okay so now we know while we moving the balloon get expands while we going up balloon will expand why when we slow down the balloon will get contracts when you talk about a dynamic or a pit or pressure and when uh, when you're speaking about static pressure when you come to a lower height the balloon will contract okay this expansion and contracts is converted into the needle movement and that's how all the three instruments are working okay once again when i travel slower now let's take capsule this is our capsule all right so to understand we use this uh, as balloon now we gonna get into the technical term these are known as capsules so when i travel slower my capsule will get contract when i travel faster my capsule will get bigger okay so when i want to uh, speaking about airspeed indicator when i travel faster i want the needle to move let's say 100 if i if i travel faster i want the needle to get increased when i travel when i reduce my speed i want my needle needle to get decrease in value okay when i travel fast my i want my airspeed indicator needle to go like this when i travel slow i want my needle to go like this so this is how it works for airspeed indicator so airspeed indicator we are using capsule and we senses the total pressure actually the capsule senses total pressure later on we eliminate static pressure in order to get the dynamic pressure okay that i'll come uh, that we'll discuss in a while so now let's see about so now we understood expansion and contraction as speed indicator if i travel faster my capsule will expand if i travel slower my capsule will get contracts and this expansion and contraction is converted into the needle movement and it shows the speed of the aircraft so this is how airspeed speed indicator is works and this principle will be more useful in when we study about altimeter and vertical speed indicator okay and this method understanding this method uh, it will help us to understand the working of airspeed speed indicator right so now let's get uh, let's get into the topic So now we know we need to measure dynamic pressure because I want the needle to move let's say 40 80 120 160 this is ASI okay so to measure speed The pressure which change due to speed is dynamic pressure okay so if i want to measure my speed i want to basically measure my dynamic pressure okay so in aircraft there is something called as pitot tube 
which is usually located under the wing which is used to measure the dynamic pressure okay so it actually looks like this like a tube right so now under the wing so when the aircraft starts moving what happens the airflow will start entering the pitot tube before that i'll clarify you to measure speed i'm sorry we already written on top we need to measure dynamic pressure because dynamic pressure is due to movement of an object pressure exerted on a body due to movement of the object but the problem is when we are moving in the pitot tube or earlier we have seen in the balloon what happens is pit uh, dynamic plus static both comes inside static as as i already explained to you static pressure is always present so likewise in pitot tube also what will happen is total pressure which means dynamic plus static both comes both the pressure get into the pitot tube but to measure the air speed we need a dynamic pressure only so what we do is so let me draw the casing it uh, so there is one uh, capsule imagine it's a balloon which expands and contracts due to the movement of aircraft earlier we have seen right the balloon which expands when we go fast and contracts when we go slow so this is the balloon now this expansion and contraction is connected to some uh, different mechanical linkages okay actually this is a simple mechanism which is actually uh, running behind the instrument when you see the air speed indicator the front part you will see this behind the instrument actually these kind of uh, capsule and uh, uh, metal linkages are present to make the needle uh, up and down so now here what you get is so pitot tube is there you will get a total pressure this total pressure comes and get into the capsule okay this pitot tube is connected to this instrument so that whatever pressure you will get in the pitot tube you will uh, the the pressure will transfer into the this capsule okay now in this capsule what pressure we have total pressure or pitot pressure total or pitot okay but in order to measure the speed we don't want static pressure we only want dynamic pressure so what we have is we have a static vent so what happens through this inside the capsule now there is let me draw the capsule alone here separately dynamic plus static both the pressure are there in the capsule now when i make a vent if i made a vent the static pressure will automatically come inside right like uh, for an uh, bottle for an example bottle if you crush the bottle and lock it the bottle will be remain crushed right but when you open the bottle it will automatically expands because the static pressure comes and get into the bottle so likewise here we have a opening through the opening static pressure get get inside the casing this is casing this entire area and this is capsule this is capsule and this is casing now this static pressure and capsule dynamic plus static and in the casing static pressure is there so this static and this static cancel out each other because now this expansion is due to dynamic and static and here the static comes and try to compress the capsule okay the amount of expansion which the static pressure doing to this capsule has been eliminated by the static pressure 
they cancels out each other and remaining what we have is dynamic pressure only so now the capsule will expand with the help of dynamic pressure only and it will move the uh, metal linkages and connection and finally it convert the into a needle movement and we get the airspeed in our dial or display so this is the working of as we have seen how does the asi works now we're going to see errors of asi airspeed indicator obviously it's an instrument so no instrument in this world are uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's the readings are accurate so there will be always some kind of errors in all the instruments so we got some errors in the airspeed indicator also so the errors are number one blockage so what all the main what is the main source for the airspeed indicator to work is one is pitot to sense the total pressure and second one is static vent to sense the static pressure so that they cancel the static and in, and they will display the reading accurately but if there is a blockage we are flying in a very high altitude uh, 10000 20000 30000 where the temperature is really low so there are lot of chances for ice to form and block those vent pitot and the static vents if they block they get obviously they get a wrong reading so that's the error it's known as error due to blockage okay so there is a big explanation for it i'll explain i'll explain you that separately in another video so now let's see the way to easily remember those all those errors okay so now blockage and these blockage questions are more frequently asked in dgc exams so the mnemonic is put sword pitot under read during descent static over read in descent so this is what you need to remember and uh, while climbing it uh, uh, sorry pitot under read in descent so pitot over read in climb the opposite of this you just need to remember put sword and pitot under read descent the opposite of this is pitot over read on climb the second one static over read on descent so the opposite is static under read on climb which means if pitot is blocked it under read in descent and over read in climb if static is blocked it's over the the instrument will over read in uh, descent and under read in climb over read means let's say we are flying 100 knots but if the instrument says 120 means it is known as over read under read means if you are flying 100 knots and the instrument is showing us you are flying 80 knots that's known as under read okay so easy to remember leakage if leakage happens pitot under read static over read which means if a leakage happens in pitot the instrument gonna under read and if leakage happens in static the airspeed indicator gonna going to over read it will over read okay and here there is no climb and no descent next instrument error all instruments are made they try to make perfectly as much uh, as perfect as possible but none of the instrument is 100% perfect so the instrument due to, uh, due to manufacture problem or manufacture imperfection uh, we have seen the linkages and small small tiny objects are there in the airspeed indicator so that might get uh, some kind of uh, manufacture imperfection maybe the gears are not properly aligned or there is more friction in the needle so something some any imperfection will create some will make the instrument to give the reading incorrectly maybe it may give higher also it may give lower also those errors are known as instrument error next is pressure or position error so in order to measure the air speed we need to measure static and dynamic pressure correctly otherwise we get into a wrong the our instrument will display a wrong reading okay to measure the pressure correctly we need to keep the pitot and static uh, pitot tube and static vent on the place where we get less disturbance right because aircraft is moving forward there are the, there are a lot of chances to get uh, the pitot tube and static tube might get disturbance because of forward moving air if the pitot and static tube get disturbed then it cannot sense the proper dynamic pressure or proper total pressure or proper static pressure so the position of the pitot tube and static vent is very important to measure uh, to measure the speed 
correctly so that is known as pressure or position error right no matter there are places where we get least affected but sometimes there is a turbulent flow turbulent means uh, we may get a uh, turbulent in the air so those those turbulent will actually give a incorrect sensing of will actually create a trouble to the pitot tube and static vent to measure the pressure so due to the trouble for a short period of time uh, it may give incorrect readings okay it's not permanent for some time next is density change in density this i will explain you in the next video compressibility this error will occur at high speeds for example let's take a balloon now when we going up to 200 knots 200 knots to 300 knots air is incompressible air is not compressible how much fast it goes that much expansion it gonna give but above let's say 200 knots air will start getting compressed which means if we travel more than 200 knots the air will come inside the capsule and gets compressed and gives extra expansion so that extra expansion is due to compressibility of air not due to our forward movement okay so above 200 knots light aircraft which we are using Cessna 172 DA uh, 20 DA 40 for training they they doesn't go to 200 knots so we don't have compressibility error but uh, jets they travel at the speed of 400 knots 350 knots so they usually uh, they they uh, they actually calibrate their instrument for the compressibility error so basically compressibility error is uh, when you travel when you travel at high speed more than 200 knots air will get compressed and the compression will give the extra expansion of the capsule and if the capsule expands more the needle will also move more so this is uh, a compressibility error next is maneuver induced error this is similar to pressure or position error because incorrect sensing of pressure due to turbulent this is pressure or position error maneuver induced error is again incorrect sen sensing of pressure but this time due to we are maneuvering the aircraft let's say uh, we are into a steep turn sudden steep turn and suddenly we are flying straight and we are climbing and we, we are facing some kind of problem in controlling the aircraft so let's say we are maneuvering the aircraft or we are we maneuver the aircraft okay uh, sudden banking sudden pitching so when you do this maneuver rapidly so that time the pitot and static since it is getting uh, uh, since it is moving rapidly up and down left and right it will sense the pressure incorrectly because for them to measure the pressure correctly they should be free of disturbance if you disturb the pitot and static tube that disturbance either can come from the air or your maneuver so when it happens when it get disturbed it will give incorrect reading so incorrect reading due to position or turbulent is known as pressure or position error incorrect sensing of pressure due to you maneuvering the aircraft is known as maneuver induced error okay so there are total seven error blockage leakage instrument position or pressure density compressibility and maneuver induced error now we are gonna see types of airspeed there are four types of airspeed indicated airspeed shortly known as IAS calibrated airspeed known as CAS equivalent airspeed EAS and true airspeed known as TAS okay so before reading this all we must understand what is actually indicated as speed okay so indicated as speed is actually not a real speed of the aircraft it is actually measurement of dynamic pressure given in knots we measured the dynamic pressure and the dynamic pressure is converted into knots and it is displaying right so here indicated as speed versus true as speed so true as speed is the real speed of aircraft in the air and indicated as speed is measurement of dynamic pressure in knots we measure the dynamic pressure and given in knots okay let's recap it we already discussed indicated as speed is dynamic pressure 
and dynamic pressure formula is half rho v square right so now rho stands for air density and v stands for the real speed of the aircraft in air so now let's imagine our uh, previous experiment of balloon so I'm drawing it uh, small right so now so when we travel at uh, let's take a high density area okay or cold area usually the place which is cold is more dense the place which is hot is less dense so let's take a colder area which is more density of air so now uh, I drawn in red so let's take it as hot area hot area less dense so when density is less rho is less so the measurement of dynamic pressure will also be less even though you are traveling faster the dynamic pressure will be low why because density is less so indicated aspect is measurement of dynamic pressure in knots even though you travel faster because of the air is less dense the dynamic pressure will also be less so if dynamic pressure is less indicated airspeed will slow will show a slower speed basically it, it under read got it so let's take a colder area let's say here the real speed of aircraft is 100 knots and let's say here also the real speed of aircraft is 100 knots this capsule will be expand uh, less and this will expands more why due to the dynamic pressure dynamic pressure is depends on air density and how fast you are moving so in both the cases let's uh, take an example that we moving at the same speed for example 100 knots but due to the change in air density hot air is less dense cold air is more dense in cold air when the aircraft is flying in cold air the capsule in the airspeed indicator will expand more due to more density and in hot air the capsule in the airspeed indicator will expand less due to less dense okay so both the place we have we are flying at 100 knots the real speed the true air, uh, true air speed but here what your instrument will show is 120 knots and here what your instrument will show is 80 knots just for an example so this is the difference between indicated airspeed and true airspeed okay <coughs> so now in order to get indicated airspeed to true airspeed in between there are another two speeds are there that we need to find out so when indicated airspeed is corrected for pressure and position we already discussed what is pressure and position error due to the turbulent flow there are chances for the error so when we uh, compensated the error the speed what we get is calibrated airspeed okay after the calibrated airspeed is compensated for compressibility we get equivalent air speed okay compressibility also we discussed when you travel at high speed air get compressed and gives the extra expansion of the capsule and the capsule reads uh, the capsule overreads it shows more speed than what you are actually flying so next is density density or also they call it as density or uh, altitude and temperature density or alt and temperature we get true air speed okay indicated air speed corrector corrected for pressure and uh, you can easily remember this row by ice t i c e t ice t okay indicated air speed corrected for pressure and proposition you will get a calibrated air speed calibrated air speed corrected for compressibility you will get equivalent air speed and equivalent air speed corrected for density or altitude and temperature we get task so what we have just seen here here the change is due to due to 
uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> less dense. Due to less dense, the change. Uh, you, we are flying on both the situation 100 knots, but we are getting a reading of 80 knots in uh, hot air and 120 knots in cold air because of more dense. If you corrected the density, what you will get is the real speed of the aircraft in air that is known as TAS. So, next we are going to see over read and under read. I have uh, uh, I told you in the previous video, uh, I will teach you the density error in the next video. So, let us see the, uh, let us see what is the density error. So, before getting into the density error, we need to know how the density is uh, actually works uh, in the earth. Uh, we know pressure and density both decreases with height, right? So, when you fly from It is density error. When you fly from hot air to cold air. So what happens? Hot air, the air is less dense. So you actually fly more speed. More speed in order to get the indicated. Uh, let's say in our previous example, like 100, we flown 100 knots. But what we actually got in dynamic pressure is 80 knots. Okay. And what is indicated in our display is dynamic pressure. Indicated airspeed. In our uh, airspeed indicator, the reading what we get is indicated airspeed. Okay. So, we need to know what are all the situations that my instrument will under read and what are situation my instrument will get will be over reading. Okay. So, now. So why it is under reading and over reading is because the airspeed indicator capsule is made according to the pressure of international standard atmosphere or the density 1225 gram per meter cube. So this if this density is prevailing in our atmosphere our airspeed indicator will work perfectly no problem because we designed the airspeed indicator capsule by uh, by taking 1225 gram per cubic meter cube as our reference because that's the isa value which is given to the aviation okay international standard atmosphere value given by ico to the all the uh, to the aviation now let's discuss about density error so density error is actually uh, happening due to the uh, density which is different from isa because the airspeed indicator which they manufacture it will measure only the correct speed when there is isa atmosphere occurs okay and isa conditions when isa conditions occur isa condition is 1013.25 hectapascal pressure pressure 1013.25 hectapascal and temperature is 15 degrees celsius at sea level if this condition occurs then only the airspeed indicator will works uh, most accurately or correctly right so when this situation this uh, atmospheric condition does not occurs there will be always a density error because density changes with temperature and pressure so let's say for example today the density is more okay density can be more by uh, more pressure if pressure is more density will be more if pressure is less density is less okay uh, likewise if temperature is more density will be less if temperature is less density will be more so these conditions like in other words you can say uh, pressure and uh, density are directly proportional temperature and uh, density are inversely proportional okay rho rho stands for density so when pressure and temperature are different from isa density also changes and our airspeed indicator is 
design according to our ISA conditions and ISA conditions does not happen it's just a uh, average value so uh, uh, we cannot expect the ISA atmosphere to happen in a real environment okay so now let's see let's say today the density is more if density is more what happens dynamic pressure is again half rho v square density will be more so dynamic pressure will be more even though you are traveling slower due to high density the dynamic pressure will be more if dynamic pressure is more expansion will be more and due to more expansion of the capsule the needle will give more speed right second case density is less if density is less what happens dynamic pressure will be reduced due to density so if you travel faster due to less density the capsule expansion won't be uh, of enough value or the ca capsule expansion will be less so that the amount or the reading what your uh, airspeed indicator will show you also less and this error is this more or less which means either the airspeed indicator will show you a higher value in case of more density than what you actually flying and uh, or it will give the lower value than what you actually flying due to less density this error is known as density error so now let's read about color codes or color markings which are marked in the airspeed indicator airspeed indicator is actually uh, filled up with some color uh, lines which indicates a certain value or limits okay let's see one by one so we have white markings which run from 40 knots to 85 knots so the white line which marks 40 to 85 knots the upper these white line have a lower and upper limits so lower limit is the one which is which starts with the lowest speed so white arc starts with the 40 knots so the lowest point of white arc is or the lower end of the lower end of white arc is 40 knots and upper end of white arc is 85 knots so the lower end indicates vso v for velocity or v for speed it's stall operating speed okay so this is the speed where the aircraft will stall in landing configuration landing configuration means when the flaps are fully deployed and the landing gear is down okay so that's the stalling speed with your flaps full and landing gear down so let's see the upper end of white arc upper end of white arc says vfe vfe means v for speed flap extended speed so 85 knots is the speed where you can fly the maximum speed you can fly with your full flap extended okay next let's come to green arc green arc starts with approximately 48 and ends at 128 knots so the lower end of green arc is 48 knots which is known as vs1 and the upper end of green arc is 128 which is known as vno so vs1 stands for it's a stalling speed at clean configuration vso we have seen it's a stalling uh, stalling speed in landing configuration vs1 which means stalling speed in normal config clean configuration which means no flaps and no gear but for some aircraft landing gear is fixed so in that landing gear we are not going to consider about only the flap we do consider about so the upper end of green arc uh, ends at 128 knots which is known as vno normal operating speed so be uh, what does this means beyond this we should not go unless or until it's a smooth air smooth air means calm environment there is no uh, windy or uh, no uh, tough winds it's a smooth when the like how water is smooth and uh, rough likewise air also it gets smooth and rough so vno is a upper end of green arc you should not exceed the speed unless or until in a uh, except smooth air okay or unless or until it is uh, smooth
So after green, we do have a yellow arc. So if it starts from 128 to close to 161, uh, one. yeah, close to 160. So this is actually your caution range. So this is the speed actually you can fly with caution or you should not fly uh, unless or until it's a smooth air. So basically you should not go more than uh, beyond green arc if it's not a smooth air. So last we have a, a red line which indicates VNE never exceed speed under any, any circumstances you should not exceed the speed. If you exceed there will be a damage to your aircraft right and uh, there is one speed in between which uh, marks with the blue line and uh, which is known as VYSE which is single engine best single engine rate of climb speed okay so this is known as uh, this is actually applicable for uh, multi-engine aircraft because if one engine fails you need to fly a certain speed to maintain a best rate of climb speed okay so if you maintain this blue line speed in a multi engine if one engine fails you are in a safe range so vyse means best rate of climb speed with one engine inoperative in the multi engine aircraft okay so let me write this one by one stall in landing configuration stall in clean configuration max maximum flap extended speed normal operating speed never exceed speed and VYSC best rate of climb speed with one engine inoperative this is for multi engine okay Apart from this, we do have some uh, another important V-speeds also. Let's look at it. Apart from this, we have uh, VLO, VLE, VX, VY. So these kind of speeds we actually uh, do not have in the airspeed indicator color markings but in exams they do usually ask the definition of these speed speeds and what uh, we have seen just before okay VFE, uh, VSO, VS1 and so on. So VLO stands for landing gear operations speed, landing gear operating or opera operating speed which means in bigger aircraft they, uh, who has uh, the bigger aircraft which has a retractable landing gear which means they can fold and they can retract and they can deploy so they usually have a landing gear operating speed range for example let's say uh, 140 to 170 knots or 100 to uh, one, uh, 140 to 170 knots so within the speed range only you can either put the landing gear down or take the landing gear in either down or up within this speed range only you are authorized to operate if you exceed the speed then damage might occur extended speed landing gear extended speed which means it's the maximum maximum permissible speed with your landing gear down 
okay land uh, listen carefully vlo and vle they both are different vlo is the speed the speed range within which you can operate the landing gear either you can take your gear down or you can put your gear up right landing gear extended speed means after putting the landing gear down this is the maximum speed you can fly with the gear down position okay next is vx best rate of climb speed i'm sorry best angle of climb speed vy best rate of climb speed so vx best angle of climb vy best rate of climb speed what does mean by angle of climb and rate of climb angle of climb means maximum height gain in a shorter distance rate of climb best rate of climb speed is maximum height gain in a shorter time okay so let's say you want to there is a runway and there is a big mountain just next to the runway so here you want to reach some certain height let's say if you uh, reach 500 feet you are clear of the mountain so in this case which speed you will be flying you will be flying best angle of climb speed because i i'll be taking off here because i'll be running for some distance take off run then i'll lift off once i took off i want to reach 500 feet in less distance i don't want to reach 500 feet like this okay it took me this much distance in case b and uh, this much distance in case a so i will be for every aircraft there is some certain speed which says best angle of climb speed so if i fly the speed i will be reaching i will be gaining the maximum height in shorter distance less distance more height and second case best rate of climb okay now there is some another aircraft is flying in our same position so controller is advising us to climb to climb 2000 feet high or climb 2000 feet let's say you are flying at 10000 feet and the controller is saying climb to 12000 feet immediately okay because there are another flights are flying at the same level so controller is asking us to climb to 12000 feet immediately i want to climb 2000 feet immediately extra so at that time i will be flying the speed vy so that i will be reaching 12000 feet as quick as possible so that's the difference between vx and vy and uh, the v speed which we have seen so far these are all just the basics there are a lot of v speeds are uh, used in uh, uh, aviation used in flying so uh, and these are the basics of v speeds which uh, dgc ask in exam okay so that's the end of air speed indicator lesson i hope you understood all the topics we'll see in the next topic we'll see you back in the next topic